Hello, my soccer universe. Well, let's talk another kind of crazy Serie A weekend, but crazy mostly because, yeah, weird jersey matches. But there were also some crazy results in there. And yes, I'm doing the Serie A now as the second video because I realized there are more important games played in Spain, whatever, uh, especially Portugal, where I actually want to wait for that in England. Also, there's an interesting game. So, yeah. Sierra also has a Monday night game, as, as, as we see, but I think that has not as many implications as this one. And yeah, back to the weird jerseys. So I, I don't have a, yeah, I have one Milan jersey with crazy color, but to, to, to be honest, I think this one is closer to the current third jersey. And it is crazy because there's a pocket here. That's the weirdest things ever. But yeah. Let's run through the games. I saw highlights for all but one game, so we'll talk about most of this. It started with Atalanta against Crotone, where Luis Muriel got a start. You know, Atalanta also sh um, saving a few players for the upcoming clash with Liverpool. And Muriel uh, in the 26th and 30th gave them already a good lead. But then Simi puts one back right thereafter, and it was maybe a little bit more work than Atalanta wanted, but they uh, managed to get the win which is something Inter just cannot get at the time. Uh, Inter doesn't play badly. Uh, over, overall, now they have um, Lukaku out due to COVID, as far as I know, which uh, hurts them big because now they don't have the focal point in it in attack. But they also don't convert their chances. And, you know, with Lautaro currently also out of other form, it just does not look right. Anyway, they should have gone with a lead into the... Uh, half time they did not and then after the half Chavinho and it's almost de deja vu Chavinho pops up and in the 46 and 60 second makes two goals fortunately for Inter uh, Brozovic can pull one uh, back right after that one uh, that was a crazy goal and then they should have had a penalty which was 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 a given but in the end Perisic actually gets the equalizer for Inter a uh, more than deserved draw I, I really think they would have deserved to win in there but hey <laughs> Milan fan Always happy when Inter drops points, in a way. Uh, speaking of Milan, they almost dropped drop points. The first half, I think, was Milan fully in control and they get a really beautifully played goal uh, through Cassie, where just Ibrahimovic uh, is sent deep, and then passes the ball back and Cassie can laser up in the top top corner. It was really, really nicely played. And Milan maybe should could have doubled, double but I think a 1-0 was overall all right. And as I said, they played in their weird third jerseys. I, you know, in the morning I thought about, yeah, how will Milan be playing, knowing that Udine has those uh, weird black and white jerseys now, which I actually throw back to the 80s. So, yeah, I quickly came to the conclusion, yeah, this will be the time that they will pull out a, a bluish, greenish jersey uh, out there. And yeah, uh, I, as I said, I've been thinking about it, but the good news is I've heard that there's a red jersey coming uh, next season. Not uh, really crazy look, looking forward to the room at home jersey, but the, away, the third jersey in red, that's something I've been wait, waiting for a long time. And I hope they get the tone somewhat destroyed. So yeah, Milan full in control, uh, playing in a similar fashion as they played already against Sparta Prague. You know, not exciting, but you know, getting the, getting it done. However, they concede a penalty. Yeah, it was maybe a rash challenge by um, Rom Manioli, but I can also see this being over overturned um, penalty. The power con con converts, and then there was a slight moment where I thought, yeah, Milan is vulnerable now. But then again, Pioli made the right uh, exchange. I did not necessarily like that Salamakers came uh, off. Uh, no, not Salamakers. Uh, Benacer came off, Salamakers came off at the same time for Brim Dias, but Benacer came off and Tonali came on, but I actually think this gave the Milan game a different, I don't want to say dim a dimension, because uh, Benacer is probably one of the best players out there, but there was a, a, a different rhythm, and also uh, Benacer looked look a little bit over, over, overplayed in a way as well. Uh, yes, they needed to hold off the... Um, Attacks a little bit by Udine, but then on the on, on the other side you can bring on Rebic again, and Rebic was already uh, instrumental in the winning goal, which came by Ibrahimovic. A bicycle kick, yes, similar to the one in Augsburg, not the prettiest one, but a bicycle kick nonetheless for a 39-year-old. 
I think the one thing that I always said, um, I actually re rewatched re the other day the video of where will Slatan go. I always said he has his body in perfect shape and he controls his body very well. And you can definitely tell that he's doing martial arts because the way he moves his uh, big body. I mean, he, 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 he is a tall dude. You can definitely tell that even off balance, he can uh, do stuff and he's very acrobatic. And yeah, what can I say? He has system of gold. His score, score Slatan at the moment is on fire. Absolutely. It's early in the season, as we will see in, in, in a table. But uh, this bodes really, 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 really well for uh, at least this season, I would say. I don't know how long Slatan will hang on. But yeah, this Milan fan here, very happy. Workman like win, not a great win, but you know, with the current current schedule, I don't demand uh, flashy stuff. I demand wins, and not spending too much energy on them. And I think they are getting this done. Um, the other great star was, of course, Ronaldo, who was instrumental in you uh, four one win. Uh, but it, it was a long <laughs> story of gag of, of getting there. Morata actually scores the first goal in 14th and has a where he thought he was offside, and then he gets a goal that is disallowed where he was offside, where he probably didn't think that much. The problem is that Pobega, Milan Loni, uh, gets the equalizer because also uh, Dybala is not in great form. I mean, the sitter he missed even before uh, Morata made it 1 0. Doesn't look good. Also, the jerseys for Juventus don't look good. So it needed Cristiano to come on. 56 minutes, he, he goes on, and three minutes. Within three minutes, he gets the goal to put Juve in the lead. The big star of the league is back. Although, Slatan, maybe? Who knows? Uh, then Rabio also in the 6 7 scores a very weird goal uh, where. He runs in, into the box and he looks at uh, Morata. Morata, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he's there, maybe I can play ball. Then um, all the defenders, I think, uh, he almost lo loses the ball and then suddenly, yeah, okay, I can put in the goal as well. Weird goal. And then Ronaldo with the Panenka, which I don't see much from Ronaldo. Maybe he has been practicing this in while well, he was on uh, quarantine. Makes it 4 1, and you will look uh, looked all right. It's their second a proper win in the seasons, which for Juve is kind of a really tough thing to say, an uh, unusual thing, let's put it that way. Uh, the craziest game was definitely Torino Lazio and probably also like the craziest Georgian. But this one I saw uh, probably the last half hour uh, live and yeah, I, I couldn't believe those Lazio jerseys. Another crazy, crazy moment. The Juve jerseys were bad, the Lazio jerseys yeah, they are uh, an attack on your eyes. Lazio took a lead through Pereira, but right after Bremer can already equalize, and then uh, they get uh, Torino gets a penalty that Bellotti just puts in. I mean, it goes through the legs of Reina because he pulled it down to down the middle. Then great free kick by Milinko is so savage. Where I have to have, have, have to say, Sirigo needs to direct. Uh, need, needs to speculate a little bit less. It was his corner. He he should save it, but very well kicked. And then it was a very offensive game going up and down. So I joined at 2 2. It was going up and down. I always thought that Lazio is a little bit more in the game. But in the end, it's uh, Torino who get the goal. I thought there was a foul, but uh, Halu, Halukic gets the ball. But suddenly he's very free and can put it into, into the net in its 87th. And you really think, yeah, that's finally the win for Torino. Torino not playing all that badly, but they're losing many games at the moment. Um, yeah. yeah. Coach is, of course, the former Milan, the worst Milan coach in history. So let's see where, where this is going. Torino has a knack for um, picking up coaches that were great before they had their previous appointment. I mean, they also had the guy who um, uh, who failed to qualify Italy for, for, for the World Cup. Then, in stoppage time, the game kicked in into Nike. Lazio, furious, they actually get a penalty that also was, that was a zone. So, I mean, yes, there was a hand handball, but it comes from the hip, kind of uh, hit, hit, hitting the hand. I was not sure if it will be given, but um, it is given, and Immobile can equalize in the 95th. There were five minutes of stoppage time given, but, of course, the review took so long, so they got a few more. And Torino actually did their part, tried to play it safe to at least get, get the draw, but then there's one less free kick given. Ball goes in deep, and the Torino defenders, the defenders are more or less standing there and don't know what they're doing. 
and Casedo is uh, coming to uh, through uh, going through them and puts it in internet for four three win Lazio in stoppage time. Uh, heartbreaking loss for Torino. But I think uh, it, it was an amazing game. Games Ocean 4 3 is always a great result, I have to say. Serie A keeping the goals up. Uh, the evening games then only had two goals per quarter game, which is kind of uh, disappointing. Fiorentina's problem is that defensively they're not good and Roma just overwhelmed and stifled their, their attack and then overwhelmed them de defensively. And Spinazzola in the 12th gets the goal, they should have gotten more. I mean, Jaco had uh, two or three sitters. They took until the 70th that Pedro makes it 2 2 nil. It was actually too much time. And yeah, Fiorentina should play a striker. Uh, yes, they're missing now Chiesa, but Chiesa is any, anyway now the center forward. That was clearly, and I think Yakini. Ever since they got uh, a Pioli stepped down, I think Fio Fiorentina didn't have a coach that I actually can subscribe to. And I still don't understand what was behind Pioli's uh, step stepping down. But on the other hand, I'm very happy because Pioli is doing a great job at Milan. It has to be clearly said. Um, the biggest game uh, from the table was, of course, Napoli Sassuolo, where Napoli dominated the first half and Ogimen alone had a few good chances. Mertens in the second half missed the sitter. Uh, Schul, 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 so it is a penalty given to Sassuolo that Locatelli can convert. And from that moment on, the game was a little bit more even. And yes, Sassuolo, uh, we already said it last season, they are maybe after At At Atalanta the most fun to watch team in Italy. They maybe have not have not gotten the habit of winning regularly. They have always been a pesky opponent. But this season, they are racking up the win wins as well. And yes, Napoli probably will deserve an equalizer, but later on Lopez, and that's also one of the stalls, crazy, crazy goals, where he has the ball, goes through, through defenders, then takes six shot, is deflected by the goalkeeper, towards the line where um, Mario Rui is standing there and can knock it away, and it goes through him as well. It was an uh, absolute crazy goal. And Stunio Sassolo, Napoli a little bit in trouble. I really think that Napoli, well, I really, I still think that Napoli is one of the, the most talented teams in Serie A. They really could go for a run. But they're dropping points as, as of late. Either Europa League or Serie A, it does not look all that great. And then the Derby della Lanterna, um, yeah, two goals in the 23rd and 28th. Uh, Yankto giving the lead to Sampdoria, Scamacchia. With his first Serie A goal, his, his first start for Genoa, I think. Uh, ends 1-1, one, one, Sampdoria having good chances, especially Keita Balde missing late on. Uh, I think once he hit, hitting the and once really taking a bad shock, shot. And we have Monday evening, I will talk about, I'll give you the result uh, next week between Hellas and Benevento. While you watch, when you watch this video, you probably have seen already the result. So in the standings, Milan remain top, yay! And if you look at it, they're all ready, the the, now, according to all the favorites to win the championship, but I'm not alone, it's also 538, favor them. But it's a wide open race, you really, really must, if you like a tight league, the Serie A is delivering. I mean, I think everyone until Lazio has probably as a shot at a European spot at the moment. And I wouldn't even count out like a Fiorentina if they can get it together uh, to move in there. I also think that Torino is vastly under underrated. They're a much better side than the one point out of five games is showing. But, you know, uh, having a game in hand against Genoa nonetheless probably would make things look better. Inter... As I said, they're not getting many wins, but I actually still think that Inter is the team team to beat and they're not too far. I mean, five points sounds like a lot. It is not that much. Uh, Juventus is suddenly in third spot. Atalanta is all, all, all up there and Na Napoli dropped a little bit. Roma also hanging in there. It is really tight and now Lazio can also join the party. Uh, it's, it will be an exciting Serie A season. The one thing that it, I have to repeat is only six games in. I was thinking today, uh, if you're six games to go, you know this is a long home stretch, but you're all, you're, you know, you have done the most part and uh, the season has a certain shape. Six games in is nothing. And it is still a very long season. So uh, I'm keeping my hopes down, but I'm very happy what Milan is showing. Uh, next round, we have actually one huge matchup, Atalanta against Inter, and then an early match between Lazio and Juve, also not that bad, so uh, stuff.
to look forward to. Milan's playing late against Verona, Bologna, Napoli. I'm not so sure about that one. But yeah, I think there's quite some stuff. I mean, Atalanta, Inter. That Sunday will have great games. I already know uh, that, that we can have the Classica. We have uh, Liverpool and City. We have Atalanta, Inter. Lots of good stuff to look for. And we have Valencia against Real Madrid. That's not that great. We'll see. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye.